we're moving towards the business end of Hero ISL 2021 22. And as we do that, we're going to be continuing with the Let's Football live show every Saturday at 2 p.m. As I welcome you all to this edition of the show. And as we do go on with the show, we will be also joined by the movers and shakers, the people making the difference at the top end of the table. And one such individual is going to join us on the show. I know you guys have been waiting very, very excitedly for his participation, and we do finally have him today. But before we bring him on, I want to bring on the usual suspects of Shaiju Damodran, Polasthar, and Kaushik Varun to come right in. And gentlemen, straight up, are you guys excited for what lies in store for us on this show? Shaiju, take it. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. I, I, that's a true, that's a true pass to me. So yeah, absolutely, you absolutely. Yeah, it just as uh, it is as like as a true ball. I uh, want a sp- free space. I would love, I would love to score. Simply. Right. No, absolutely. So guys, no point in wasting any more time. Let's bring in the Kerala Blasters FC head coach Ivan Vukomanovic on the Let's Football Live Show. Ivan, come right in. That's a, that's a silent clap that we're doing for you as we wait for you to <laughs> unmute yourself. How are you doing, Ivan? Hello, guys. Hello, guys. I'm doing fine. Thank you. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Really glad to be here with you guys. Likewise, Ivan. Likewise. We've waited for a long time for this to actually happen. We've been trying to find the right time and we're actually very, very glad we could make it happen this time around. Uh, but first, just digging back into your last game, Ivan. Uh, an unfortunate loss, of course, against Jamshedpur FC in the last game. But... The thing about the hero ISL is that the games come thick and fast. So is it a good thing that you don't have too much time to process it? You're on to the next game, already playing on Monday. Have you been able and has the team been able to kind of process that loss and go forward from here? Absolutely, because in a football, the good thing, especially on a short-term league like we have here in ISL, uh, is that the games are just uh, coming by. And actually, you don't have time to... Uh, uh, digest on a long term. It's like, guys, the game is over. Look, now it's it's not any more question how we lost the game or because we will be talking about that, of course. But now the fact is how we're going to respond. So that's all. So in a, in a, in a modern sport, in a, on a professional highest level, you have to be capable of responding immediately after that because there are many games uh, coming in your life, not only in a professional sport, but every day, let's say, objectives and things that are coming to you you have to be capable of going through it like, okay, let's go continue further on because the future is coming. So we have to be ready for that. Yeah. You know, Ivan, I'll let you in on a secret. I was actually there at the game and I, I saw you post the game as well. I was tempted to come up to you and uh, tell you that we're really looking forward to having you on the show, but decided not really the best time to do that. So we waited for you to come on here. And it's great to see you in the mood that you are. But uh, you have known to be very animated on the bench, uh, Ivan. You know, you're generally expressive and animated uh, like like you can see on your screen right about now. Is this? <laughs> have you always been like this as a manager or a player? Have you always been kicking every ball? You you know as a as a player not because as a player I was I was always calm, uh, fully concentrated, uh, never responded to any provocations uh, whatsoever. N- now as a coach it's completely different because as a uh, being player being coach is completely two different worlds. So, yeah. because as a player, you have the possibility to act and react on a certain things during the game. As a coach, not. Because then you depend on certain things. You're sitting there. You cannot do... I remember even from my previous experiences already maybe 10 years ago, coaching one, uh, one game in, a, in UEFA League against Red Bull Salzburg. And the things were happening like on a high-pressure game. The things happens so quickly that even as a coach, you want to stand up and say certain things. There are three new things that just happened. And, yeah. you know, now as a coach, sometimes you don't have a time. And even if you have time to call someone and say, because on that high frequency, uh, heart rate game, the players, they are under pressure. The players, they are, there is adrenaline. There are emotions. And sometimes even if you want to give a couple of advices, it's quite impossible because it's up to them. That's In my vision, I always prefer as a coach to teach them and show them during the training sessions the things that they can face and they will face during the game, being capable of responding to those situations. Otherwise, imagine playing in Kochi or in some big stadiums. Even if you want to stand up and call your player, nobody can hear you. So yeah. actually, you know, sometimes when you express yourself with the kind of emotions, it's normal because for me, football is emotion. Now, uh, you know, now that you're here, Ivan, uh, I was discussing with the rest of the crew over here about a fact that I read on the internet, and you can confirm this for us now. 
Is it true that you've never been sent off as a manager or a player in your entire career? Uh, as a player, only once in 18 years, ah. a long career, I've been sent one, uh, sent only once. And how did that happen? Uh, oh, did you did you go studs up into some? Oh, was it two yellows or a straight red? It was a straight red. It was a straight red. Uh, it was during the the preseason. Uh, we were abroad already for a month, playing so many games. And I remember that last game, coach telling that everybody has to play only forty, so forty five minutes each. And then let's just finish with that. It was against the national team of uh, Lebanon. I think we were on a preseason in Lebanon, Syria, and uh, Jordan. And the last day, everybody, everyone just was full of that. And in that game, there were like hard tackles, uh, like fight and everything. And I was just like, it was in the last minute. I was just like in a kind of flying tackle or something like that. It, it was red. It was red. Really, because <laughs> there was a fight. But anyway, but I, I admitted it. I admitted yeah. it. And uh, so other than that, I was not even a player who uh, were collecting many yellow cards during the season. Uh, like I said, fully concentrated, fully committed to, uh, to the job and work on the pitch. Yeah. But, you know, uh, since it wasn't an official game, since you've mentioned that it was during preseason, mm. not an official game. So you've actually never been sent off in an official uh, recognized football game. So maybe some of the things that we do here on the internet do seem to be true from time to time. Uh, but moving on from, from urban myths and urban legends on the internet, I know that uh, Varun uh, is desperate to get straight uh, into you and ask you a couple of questions. So Varun, why don't you go for it? Exactly. I, like, truly excited to have you here. Like, first, a small question I would like to ask. Is it the same white shirt you wear for the, every matches or is it like you change it? Uh, no, I have two of them. Oh, I, have actually two, <laughs> I have actually two of them. They're the same. And uh, what, what happened, actually, I bought them in Kolkata. Oh, great. From my city. <laughs> <laughs> no, when, but we were, uh, uh -huh. when we were in Kolkata for a Duran Cup, we had that uh, day off. Hmm. And it was really nice. Uh, we went with the technical staff all around. We went to, to visit Mother Teresa house, uh, Victoria's building, you know, and then we ended up in one uh, shopping mall just having coffee. And I said, I would like to buy a couple of shirts because later on probably I'll be uh, needing them for, uh, for the games, for the ISL. Oh, superb. Great. But, uh, you know, like you took up charge of, uh, charge of a club which has a humongous fan base like uh, Kerala is the powerhouse of Indian football, the Yellow Army. I'm sure while we're talking, a lot, lot of yellow hearts are flying in. So, how was the feeling like when you took up the charge of Kerala Blasters FC? Uh, honestly, uh, that was the period, uh, even a couple of months before it happened. I was contacted by several clubs from, uh, let's say, uh, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, uh, even Belgium even some other countries for Europe. But I was in a personally uh, unpleasant period. Um, big part of my family. First, uh, my mother got COVID. Then it was really hard. She hardly survived after 16 days uh, hospitalized. Then my father got it. Unfortunately, he died. It was in November. Then I decided not to work uh, to take that period like without a job. Then my brother with his family got it. Then I got COVID. Last year, it was around Christmas and uh, New Year's. Then I said, okay, even the interviews and the meetings I had with uh, some clubs, uh, I never had a kind of interesting feeling. And then the first meeting, the first contact I had with the uh, people from Kerala Blasters, you know, I had that immediate energy. And uh, in all my life, I was a guy who was uh, making certain decisions on a uh, gut feeling. You know, uh, it's like you meet someone. If you meet a friend, if you meet, I don't know, a girlfriend, your future wife, whatever, you just have that kind of feeling, you know. And I had a great feeling in that uh, conversation, in that meeting with the people from Kerala Busters uh, management sector and the owner. And I said, well, I'd like to be part of that. I would like to be there. So, and then with all, gathering all the information and everything, what was happening, I just got that emotion inside saying, I want to be there. I want to be part of that project. And then Listening to uh, the people, the, the owners and everything, I said, you know, this is a nice project. This is a nice story. And even if it's in the other part of the world, I like to be there. I would like because I'm an adventurer. Uh, football is a great experience. It's, it has been so far in my, uh, in my life, all my life. And 
I was never avoiding challenges. And I knew from the very beginning, this is great challenge. This is a great thing. And, you know, when you feel all that energy, all the uh, positive uh, things around that, you just want to be part of that. So that was it. For me, the decision was very easy. And then I, I just uh, canceled all other conversations, all other possible options. I said, no, 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 I want to be there. So that was it. Superb. And the whole fan base and all the players, the staff officials, they all want to, you know, uh, look forward to you leading them towards the championship thing. But uh, uh, who has been the toughest op opponent so far, you know, the toughest fight you had in the here Indian Super League this season? Who has been the toughest uh, to play uh, against? Actually, all the games for us are very tough. Um, and uh, all the games are different because all the opponents, they have different styles. And that's, that's why us as a team, you know, when you come uh, from let's say, far away, uh, speaking about previous seasons and speaking about the achievements from previous periods, hmm. you know, you cannot be in, the, in a position to announce big words. And then uh, by analyzing current situation uh, within the club, with our technical stuff and everything, we decided that we have to try to adapt on different approaches, to adapt hmm. on different opponents, trying to find every time the possible formula and option how to approach the game, how to attack the game, how to try to achieve points. Uh, till the moment where you as a team, as a club, uh, build your own uh, system, your own uh, vision that you won't continue for years. And from there on, you can be the guy who will be uh, always on top of the table. And then so far, we said in our first season, we'll have to recognize our weak points and strong points. We have to recognize the league. We have to recognize everything what's happening uh, around the ISL. And it will take some time. And we will try to adapt to any other uh, opponent, trying to find a way how to beat them, trying to wait if we want to sit down and wait, if we want to press, if we want to enter the fight. So, And with these kind of things, you have to, to continue throughout the season, of course, hoping for the best and find the correct way. So, so I think so far... Uh, trying to analyze and manage our group, trying to analyze strong and weak points, reinforce certain things, improve many things and everything. It's like a daily job that you have to continue, uh, never-ending improvement story. So, and that's the beauty of coaching job. So, so far, we have to continue building up further on, uh, improving, reinforcing the team also for the next period. And, uh, you know, trying to get Kerala Blasters on top and uh, being the top team of, of the league. And all the best for that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Ivan, I now want to bring up some of the goals that your team has scored so far this season. Some of them have truly been goal of the season contenders. Before, before the last goal was scored by, by Alvaro Vasquez from that 59-meter long range, we already had a few that would be contenders. And your teammates, uh, I beg your pardon, your players, uh, just seem to be kind of topping it one after the other, after the other, after the other. I say teammates also because you seem like you're one of the lads. So it's kind of easy to forget <laughs> that you're, 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 a, you're a coach. You actually seem to be very friendly with them as well. Uh, but, but coming back to the goals, uh, I'm going to play some of the goals that have been scored by KBFC so far during this season. I, I want you to tell me the stories behind them and what conversations were had with the players that scored the goal. What, what did you tell them after the game was done? Uh, so take a look at these and we want you to speak over these visuals as they come up. So first up, we have that Luna goal against FC Goa. Yeah. Actually, Adrian is a guy who is capable of these shots. And uh, during the training sessions, he uh, he's trying and he's doing those things. And a uh, couple of times, his, his quality and uh, his his style, he's, he's scoring uh, in the training sessions the same goals. Here, uh, the, the same, you know, Alvaro is the guy who already in the training session scored a couple of times from the from the middle pitch, you know trying those things with his free kicks, with his volleys. You know, when, when we are have these finishing sessions and everything, he's incredible with his uh, uh, shooting technique and the volleys. Like, it, it, these are the things that they repeat. So here with, uh, with Sahal as well, we, uh, with our work, we are trying to push those boys uh, when the actions in a certain moment, they need to be in a 16 because they, they can be dangerous. And uh, with those movements, uh, I'm glad that they understand by those movements they're being uh, in the box because that's the way how they can score. You know, Alvaro again with his uh, perfect positioning in, uh, between defenders. And believe me, these kind of goals he was scoring in the, in the training session uh, very often. He's repeating those things, left, right, foot, the quality of, of, 
of, of that that shows that he can perform, it's incredible. We're happy to have them, really. Yeah, brilliant, Ivan. How, how important is it as a manager to encourage the players to make their own decisions, like like shooting? I mean, I'm sure something like a 59 meter shot cannot be coached. It, it's something that's impulsive and instinctive. It came to the player. So, is it something that you consciously encourage them to do? Shoot from distance. Yeah, from let's say from normal distance. Yes, <laughs> 59 meters. <laughs> but if when it works, it works. Yeah. 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 I don't. I cannot imagine that any coach in that moment would would say to his player, "Shoot, you know, no problem. It's only 59 meters." <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But anyway, of course, uh, no. Every year, like football evolves. Speaking about ball quality, uh, pitches, like everything around, especially today, how many very beautiful goals we've seen so far in ISL this season? It's un incredible. Okay. And of course, you encourage all players to try it in the training sessions during the game as well, of course. And then when it happens during one game, it's kind of uh, players' imagination and players' lucidity that they have in themselves. Because as a former player, I know that, you know, you have one second, you control the ball, then there is idea in your brain, you know. Then as a coaching staff, we provide players options, what they can do, If it happens during the game in that position, then it's up to them. Me as a coach, I, I would never dare to shout during one game telling players, do that when you have the ball. No, it's up to them. You know, we can provide the movements, we can provide the things that they can uh, explore, uh, create, and then it's up to them. You know, uh, quality of pass, uh, final pass, assist, quality of shoot, quality of cross, yeah. and... You know, as a coaching staff, today in coaching job, you can uh, teach your players, you can provide your team how to create overload from a goalkeeper from the first part of the pitch throughout uh, first, third, midfield, side, everything. Uh, how to create overload in every part of the pitch coming to the last third, creating chances to score, and then it's up to them. Because then... in the And it's a like kind of domino effect chain work that they have to continue doing in order to arrive there in those moments, chances, creating those moments, and then scoring goals. And so that's that's how you see top teams on the top level doing those things, having the possession, creating overloads, creating chances. And that's about football today. That's what I think. Yeah, brilliant stuff, Ivan. I know that Pulas wants to pick your brain about a couple of things. Pulas, why don't you go for it? Since uh, Ivan is such a, he, he loves storytelling so much. You've got some great stories, great anecdotes uh, throughout your life, play career. But I, I've always been curious to ask you, and and I like how you put up those Instagram posts as well, where you take these acrobatic shots and the volleys, you know, and all that. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. So, so I know that you're fond of all that, but is there one game in your playing career? It could be coaching career, but preferably your playing career that you'll never forget that you were so good or probably so bad or whatever you want to choose, that you would never forget that game. Tell us about it. Uh, some derby games, big derby games when I was a younger player in uh, Red Star, Belgrade, because there's a huge rivalry between Red Star and Partizan. Derby games when uh, we were winning most of the times because we, were, we had a strong team. Actually, the anecdote, because the rivalry is so huge that even, uh, imagine my brother and my father were a huge fan of open, uh, opposite side. Like a yeah. couple of days before the derby, they don't even answer the phone. No contact, whatsoever. Then after the game, if you win, they don't answer for three, four days on phone. <laughs> and uh, these kind of things, when you play in front of, especially back then, the capacity of 80,000 people, or, you know, it, as a young player, it gives you something extra and prepare, uh, prepare for, uh, for your next chapter. You know, there were so many games that I will never forget on the a, on a highest level in, a, let's say, Uh, Champions League level, some uh, UEFA League level, these derby games uh, from different competitions. When you face top players and when you when you face the incredible quality, uh, very quickly as a young player, what helped me a lot, it was for me the big eye opener. I realized very quickly that I will never arrive as a player to the level to be on top of uh, this top level of Even when you speak of top teams in Europe. Yeah. Because the moment I arrived in France, I was a young boy. We didn't even have the internet back then, you know, a long time ago. Then you 
you see your teammates, then you start playing against top team, then you see the quality the other teams and players have, and then you say, wow, you know, I have so who's, to work. So who's been that opponent, Ivan? Who's been that one opponent on the pitch who you saw play and you just went, wow, like, this is unreal. Well, there was, you know, when I was a player in France, you know, when you when you see against uh, Paris Saint-Germain, when you see Ronaldinho back then, his uh, first years in Europe, when you see, even in the friendly games, when you face Zidane or mm. uh, real Ronaldo, like we say, yeah. when you see those qualities and when you see that level, you see, you just say like, wow, you know, that's the, the, the level. Then, Cert, then some games in the national team playing, I remember against England, then facing at that level the players like uh, uh, Lampard, uh, Steven Gerrard, uh, Emil Heskey, Mike, Michael Owen, because we are the same generation there. And then you see, you just like, you stay wow, like th this is the level that, of course, you want to compete. You want yeah. to compete, you want to fight, you want to be there. But then at one certain level, you just see that's, that's another level. And I realized that I have to work very hard. Uh, for uh, for myself and for, especially for my team to to give my services to the team playing uh, simple being concentrated and uh, trying to be on top uh, and useful for my team and this is how I was going throughout my career for a long 17 18 years old uh, there were certain moments there were certain moments where I was very satisfied with my season where I was playing for uh, my team constantly for national team uh, lots of big games there were many disappointments like breaking my leg twice uh, in the same season, uh, on the same spot, you know, mm -hmm. then being down, uh, mentally down in, as a young player, it's very hard. Then, again, going back, because in uh, in football career, there's many ups and downs and you have to deal with it. If you are not mentally ready for that, then you can crash. And if you don't get the support from your family or uh, friends or uh, team, then it's hard. It's hard mm -hmm. because professionalism in a, on a European top level, it's so cruel that... You know, some teams, they don't have time to invest in, uh, to wait for you. They just say, you know what, just get me another one. You know, go, especially when you are a foreigner. When you are a foreigner in one club, they just say, you know, just get me another foreigner. So that's it. You have to deal with it. You have to deal with all these emotions, trying to get uh, the best out of it. But yeah, right. there were many right. games where I, was, when I was very impressed with the quality. When I was playing in Bundesliga, you know, facing some of top players saying like, wow, this is like, the level that it's incredible. You have to be very hard and tough to, to compete against those guys. So uh, these are my experiences that I try today to, to pass to players, to explain them certain things, how, and especially what will happen and what could happen if they act, let's say, like this or on the other way. And uh, exactly yeah. saying this would happen and to avoid those things, bad moments, then you have to, it's up to like, again, up to them. Choose the right option. I'm just right. like here to help and provide you about certain things that you you can use for your life. For your, no, I'm, for gl your future, I'm glad for your you. Career. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I was going to ask you. The next thing I was going to ask you is that, of course, you can from apart from Kerala Blasters with players who you've worked for, um, three Indian players, the three young Indian players that you've seen in the in the Hero ISL, who have caught your eye. If, you, if you're not comfortable with other clubs, you can also always mention from within your own club. But apart from that, just for a different perspective, who are the young Indian players who have really caught your eye in the sense like, that's an impressive player. That's a, that's a top player. That's a really good player. Actually, like in this year of uh, recognizing all the teams and all the players, I can uh, admit that in every game we were facing our opponents, there were interesting profiles. You know, and uh, Again, I think that many of these young players and even any other Indian players, uh, speaking about short term of ISL, sometimes they don't get time to express themselves because on a short term with kind of whatever pressure they call, because I don't see any pressure in Indian Super League, uh, then these boys, they must perform on a, on a short term. Uh, I could name at least 10 of them because they are, they are good talents, they are good potential. And then not having this long-term part to explore themselves, to improve even more, it's like a minus point. And I'm, uh, uh, you know, th there are many of them. You can collect because I see India as a great, like, full what is, what has impressed? What has impressed you the most about these, these players that you mentioned? 
let's say mentality uh, uh, character uh, let's say fighting mindset you know never uh, abandoning never surrendering like wanting to fight till the last uh, minute uh, being uh, quick in decision uh, being hungry uh, hungry to succeed and hungry to improve and yeah. yet again knowing that this short time is not enough because they want more you know and that's why i see india as a country of you know, 1.3 billion like huge huge epicenter of talent where you just have to give the right direction to that talent and i think that they can, they can become even better and there are many of them not only young players but many of indian players that i liked because of mentality character commitment mindset fighting spirit like everything actually i'm very positively surprised fantastic thanks thanks thank you for sharing that with us ivan that was very illuminative and you are good to storyteller i can confirm that you do uh, you do and, and we all enjoyed uh, listening to that uh, i'm going to throw it to shaiju uh, chetan very very quickly but before that uh, you know uh, varun brought up your white shirt attire and you have confirmed that you bought those two white shirts from kolkata when the durand cup was on uh, but i believe last game was the first game where you wore the light white shirt and you lost so are you planning to maybe switch that up now is is the superstition broken or was there a superstition to start with no i, I must also be honest i'm not the superstition guy right. i'm not the superstitious guy because you know all the players when you you can see it during the game before the game starts every time you know these stories the players uh, they all have this ritual you know preparing for the game in the dressing room you know uh, first i'll put this you know left sock and then i will kiss my boots you know uh, you know there are many of these rituals they are using as a player as a player i was the same okay till the one moment <laughs> you know i was having that like okay i will do that when i step on the pitch you know i step with my right foot then i have to like because they, we all believe in certain things then i had i was unfortunately i broke my leg and i said okay so something's wrong so let's <laughs> let's do it now opposite okay <laughs> then i'll do opposite then i broke my leg again <laughs> and then i you went back then i then i stopped doing all those things and i was playing the best football of my life <laughs> <laughs> that says something so, that says yeah, something so so now i'm not a superstitious guy and uh, of course all of us we believe in certain things but you know about i yeah. feel good you know it yeah. gives me like good feeling with the whatever white shirt or any other color but yeah i don't but, believe but, that but even what there... what would happen if your players one day you wore something you you're about to get on the team bus and your player said no coach we need you to wear the white shirt would you change <laughs> would you give I, in I, i always have this uh, let's say short for a, for a, for a beach in case like in my bag <laughs> i can go with that no of course Come on. Ivan coach coach what coach what over is the what over is the answer regarding the white shirt i am here one for you <laughs> this is yes, this is to, to be very to be very sincere this is for you to wear for the first leg of the first semi final is 2021 22 he is this ready is for you. you i will wear it yeah <laughs> Well, with Classic. Shaiju Chetan, you have to confirm you will send it over to Ivan if they yeah, reach the. If hundred percent, it will it will reach Goa. Hundred percent, it will reach Goa. Very nice. I will make. We will make a video of me preparing with that shirt as <laughs> a proof. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Shaiju Chetan, why don't you go for it? I know you have uh, a few questions lined up for for Ivan. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and uh, actually, with the permission of Suyash. So yeah she has given me proper run, run order to question you to your from my side but like like i did always i want to start with a very light of note very light question so uh, coach it is it is very happy for me it is a honor for me to sit with you to to chat with you in this platform the isl digital indian super league digital very happy that to sit with you sit with you so coach uh, so two serbians are very famous in india right now right now in india two serbians are very famous among indians one is novak djokovic other is ivan vukmanovic so <laughs> so it 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 took uh, it took almost 10 years and 20 grand slam titles for novak 
to become famous among Indians. It took only two months for Ivan to become famous. So kindly share with us what is the secret? What is the secret of becoming famous in a very quick time? Thank you, uh, thank you very much. For also, it's my pleasure to to sit with you. Likewise, you know, to to chat with you guys, it's it's great experience. Uh, first of all, Novak Djokovic is one and only. You know, he's uh, the, one of the biggest stars in uh, in uh, Serbia. Actually, uh, my house is not far away from uh, his restaurant in in Belgrade, where I go uh, often and uh, and uh, and I have a have a meal because it's really pleasant and nice to be there. One of the best, one of the best, one of the greatest sportsmen uh, in uh, in uh, tennis history, of course. Uh, now, from our, from my side, you know, since since I since I arrived and since I uh, decided to to be part of this wonderful project, uh, I firmly believe that first of all we are all human, and first of all, uh, despite our jobs like coaching job, players, and everything. I think that the human relationships are the things that we have to to create uh, to respect each other. My also uh, starting point is always if you one day, whatever, uh, not only in sport but in global in life, if you want to be respected, first of all you have to show respect. And uh, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful to to all of people that I've met uh, here in India. I'm very grateful to. To everything what has happened since we arrived, since we managed to to start our cooperation, and you know, from my side, I will always be here to uh, to be correct, to cooperate, uh, to provide my uh, I will not say my services, but to to be as a human being first of all, you know, and then later on, I think that when we stay positive with the that correct relationships, then the results later on will follow. In football, the results they come as a final product of one process, you know, and we just started something nice. I believe in that. I firmly believe in that we can have really a nice experience. Uh, and I think that uh, throughout this process, without correct behavior, being humble, being uh, honest to each other, you know, we can create something nice. So, and kind of energy and feeling that I get when I arrived in Kochi from fans, from all the people, from everybody around, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I, I can I can tell that's one of the best feeling in my life so far. Yeah, yeah. Coach, uh, coming into an ISL question directly, coming into the coming to on the ground uh, directly. See, we all know it is a very closely contested ISL season, which as we are witnessing right now in the history of ISL. Uh, it is a very closely contested season going on. So, uh, my question to you uh, uh, is: uh, the, the, What is what is in the current scenario? What is your expectation? Is it winning the ISL Shield or uh, to qualify for the semi-final playoffs right now? Uh, again, uh, the whole story. Uh, I think that this year, like you say, it's it's really tough. And uh, I think that many people who are connected with ISL uh, did not expect some teams to be on top. They did not expect some teams or players to perform on that level. And then the league just like mixed up. And we see now so many contenders that can be on top of the table. And uh, it's so unpredictable that, like I said in previous interviews, anybody can beat anybody. Then you see, you know, one day you see the teams that uh, beat someone. The next day we're going to win against those teams. The next day this team we're going to... So it's so unpredictable until the end there are now uh, again five, six games that everybody uh, has to play and anything's possible. So that's why on a short term with this kind of league, with the fixtures, you cannot, you cannot just precise and decide the objective because anything's possible. So... Now, what we have to do, try to respond, fighting game by per game, you know, preparing for every game because you need to get points. And then where it will lead you, because there are so many direct duels, nobody knows. Nobody yeah. knows because in the last game against, in our loss against uh, Jamshedpur, yeah, we sure. saw that uh, small details, you know, uh, small mistakes can make difference. You know, penalty in the last minute uh, of the first half, like no reason to make that foul. But anyway, it happens. It's one second, you know. And then the first minute of the second half, 
and then your whole game like just goes down the water. Then we, in these very tight games, you must be ready, concentrating, knowing that's what we are I'm trying to explain very often to, to our players, that these small details on a top level make difference. That makes difference. That just turns the game uh, around and then you can win or lose. So now, if anybody asked me even before the, the season, seeing the previous seasons, the disappointment that uh, was uh, behind uh, and around the club, we decided, guys, we have to, like with a positive mindset, go yeah. through the ISL, try to build up a nice momentum, try to continue working hard, fighting for every point because nobody will give us anything. We have yeah. to fight for ourselves and trying to go towards that final goal, our objective, you know, entering, if it's possible, top four. And then when you are in semis and later, anything's possible. Because in this league, we, uh, we've seen so far that everybody can win, everybody can yeah. lose. Yeah. And that's why it's so nice and unpredictable. Yeah. I'm sorry that the league is not on the longer term because mostly of some players, because what we get now, that many teams, okay, due to COVID situation, due to injuries, many teams will end up the season without maybe best players. Mm. Because Correct. take any player now who gets injured, season's done. Because you have three, four more weeks, you get now muscle injury, it's at least five weeks. Yeah. You know, yeah. you cannot play. So on that term, I'm sorry for some clubs because the, some players will miss the most important games, you know. And that's at the end, it will not give you that fully uh, great feeling. So, right. so now on, like we have to continue. Like we have, uh, I think, less than one month till uh, our last game uh, on a regular uh, competition, and then we'll see. Six more games to go. We have to fight for every point. Trying to be there, of course. Everybody wants to be there. If you have a chance to participate, be in top four, of course, you want to be there. We want to be there, of yeah. course. But now only depends during the next period how we will uh, explore those moments, how we will uh, achieve uh, points, if it's possible. So, but we will work hard for it, that's for sure. We want but to coach, be there. Coach, coach adding, to the, adding to the point which you right, mentioned right now injury, about injury, one of your main first 11 players, Ormi Pam, I, I just received the the, the 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 confirmation from the hospital that he had a he had a nasal injury to, today morning and uh, he might be out of the season. Then again, you have to think about because you have only you have you 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 are allotted to use only four foreigners. So if you are using two of the centre backs, whom you will play up front. So big questions. Yeah, because uh, just look at the fact that. We are missing one of our uh, biggest potential, uh, Raul KP. We are missing him from 19th November, first game against ATK. He got injured in a 30-something minute. And he's still out because of his uh, unpleasant injury. So now, Hormi, as a young, promising player, our goal was also this year uh, giving him time and space, trying to build him up, develop as a valuable player of ISL, Kerala Blasters, hopefully future national team if it's possible. You know, he was... a uh, uh, in a surgery, uh, he has uh, he broke his nose, so uh, probably tomorrow or the after tomorrow he'll be back in the hotel with us. I'm very sorry for him because we wanted him to uh, play till the end of the season, also a couple of games. Uh, last game, we wanted to refresh a little bit certain players because we now have in the next period many games. Uh, you know, and then in the football, things like that, they, they just happen. So for him, it will be also an experience for the future. Hopefully, hopefully he will be able to play some games till the end because he's a great promising player. So then whoever is not on the pitch, whoever is not available, will have to use other players because that's why we have a squad of 20-something players. Correct. And coach, one more question. This, this, this answer, all the Kerala Blasters fans, I, I am 100% sure the fans watching this show live would like to hear this answer from your mouth itself. Sir, uh, coach, the, uh, over the years, in past seasons, Kerala Blasters is a tendency to change coach after every season. So, question is very direct. Will you continue with Kerala Blasters and do you expect another time in coaching? Yes, of course. I expect to, to continue. I also mentioned in the previous interview, we had already uh, very good conversations. Uh, and we have both sides. We have a great motivation to continue together. The, like the only thing now this year, I'm sorry, that maybe with some great games that we played so far this season, 
that because we didn't play them in front of our crowd. That would be awesome. That would be like, and that's the thing that I would like to experience. That's the thing that hopefully next year without the bubble, because, you know, all this bubble thing, uh, it works weird on everybody. You know, it gives you weird feeling when you play games here in Goa, you know, without fans. It just, it's not, you don't have the great, that's not it. So what I would like to ex express and coach, and... coach, please, excuse, excuse me, coach, and you will get more white shirts cheaply in Kochi. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I arrive in Kochi, I go to buy some shirts around. Wherever it is, in Lulu shopping mall, whatever. I'll go. <laughs> no, really. Well, I think that both sides, we would like to continue. Uh, I think we agree that let's just go throughout this season. Let's just finish the job and I think later on because we both have this motivation that we will sit down and probably uh, find an agreement because we uh, bo like so now both sides we know that if you want to achieve something good in football you must work with consistency you must work uh, on a longer term with the same group maybe with some changings you know trying to improve even more and going on a higher level and that's what we agreed to build up with Kerala Blasters and I think that uh, there will be no problem to, to extend later, to continue later, because so far we have correct relationship, we have correct uh, communication. And so far, I'm glad that uh, we work uh, good with the players, that everybody's happy, so we just have to continue. That's all. You know, Ivan, it's a measure of how much you already know about the city, that you're already name-dropping the, the names of the shopping malls over there and, and the local spots over there. So... So well done, good, good research on that. I was already, I was already driving, you know, from uh, from a hotel to training grounds and everything. So we know already a couple of things. <laughs> no, but well we done. spent actually, we spent almost uh, because we started very early this uh, last year on fifth yeah. of August. We started <laughs> our training uh, trainings uh, because we wanted to train also with the B team. We wanted to train with the players from a youth. We wanted to check out all possible potentials, you know. And uh, I think that even this year, if the plan later on goes on, then the team will probably start again earlier like that because we want to explore again certain things. So, you know, coaches and ICT, we've been going around even with the COVID restrictions, you know, respecting certain things. So I like it so far, really. And, you know, coach, uh, we were reminiscing about how it used to be before uh, the bubble season started. So take a look at this video, absorb the sound that exhibits itself in the cauldron that is the JLN Stadium in Kochi and uh, I want your reactions to what you felt after this video is done but take a look at this first. And a younger looking Sahal as well, yeah? Wow. <laughs> you know, you just get goosebumps of all those things. And again, as a, as a former player who was formed in such a club, you know, with the crowd, and now as a, as a let's say, person of football, this is what drives you up. This is what gives you motivation and, uh, and uh, for, uh, for every other action. Because I think that, if we speak honestly, all the boys, when they start uh, shooting the ball, you know, start, start practicing, they dream about those moments. You know, they dream about playing in front of those crowds because that's the, that's the point. And when you have that energy from your fans, the support, and the, if the club has that, everything, would, of course, you want to be part of that. That's the, what you're living for. So, and when I see those moments, like, wow, you want to be, you want to be there. So hopefully, hopefully it will happen. Yeah, well, coach, hopefully it will happen and hopefully it will happen sooner rather than later. Uh, just to wrap up, I'd like to say you've been very, very gracious with your time. Uh, thank you so much for spending your time with us here at the Let Football Live show. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I can speak on behalf of uh, Varun, Pulas, and Shaiju Chetan over here. 
that uh, this has arguably been one of the best interviews that we've had so far on the Let's Football Live show. <laughs> Thank so, you guys. Thank you guys for inviting me. Right before you Thank leave, you coach. Much. Right before you leave, are you Red Star or Partisan? Putting you on the spot. Red Star, of course. All through. <laughs> this is one for the, one for your one for your friends back home, so your Red Star supporting friends can be happy back in Serbia. <laughs> of course, of course, it's a huge family. It's a huge family and uh, a great club. Actually, Red Star won Champions League 1991. Yeah. So huge history, so many titles. As a player, I was winning titles, cups. So that's a great part of history. One of the biggest clubs of that uh, European region. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff, coach. Thank you so much again for joining us, and uh, hopefully, wish uh, Kerala Blasters FC uh, a great run uh, in the end of the season going forward. Thank you, guys. Thank you for uh, inviting me. All the best. Stay safe. Shaiju Sh- Sh- Chetan just just wants more. Just I'm waiting. So, yeah. I'm <laughs> yes. waiting those shirts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just just one just one word answer a quick fire question, coach. Keeping keeping out KBFC. Keeping out KBFC. Which team has the chance to win this year's ISL? <laughs> There are like six of them. <laughs> so it won't be a one. It won't be a one-word answer, Shaju I can tell you. That. No, it there, won't be a one-word there are many answer. of them. There, no, we have to be honest. We have to be honest. If we just mentioned like consistency, working with consistency, Hyderabad is one of the teams who is working with consistency now, mm. second year in a row. So when you continue working with certain approach and vision, the results they come at the end. You know, this is always like have been like that in football. It will always be like that. So. That's why you need that in the football. But there are many of teams who can, who are now contenders who can participate in uh, in the playoffs in the final. Absolutely. On that note, more white shirts coming your way, coach. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. All the best. Thanks, coach. Bye. All the best. Thank you. Bye. 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 Well, that was lovely, wasn't it? And uh, staying on the topic of Kerala Blasters FC, we know that Kerala Blasters is playing SCS Bengal in their next fixture. The first fixture did uh, have its moments. There was uh, there was a contentious decision. There was a goal that was given and then disallowed after that. Uh, I want your thoughts, Shayu Chetan and Varun, on how this season's uh, uh, second leg game is going to go in the league stage between Kerala Blasters FC and SCS Bengal. As we'll have the images and visuals of what happened the last time going around. But Shayu Chetan, what do you think? Uh, how's the game going to go? Uh, yeah, we, uh, yeah, now we are we, now we are watching the first leg match. It, it was a one-one draw, you know. Uh, Alvaro Vasquez scored from one side, and uh, Tomislav Marcela scored from the other side. Uh, but uh, looking into the second leg, I think uh, I think uh, to to all respect to the Kolkata side, uh, they t- mathematically East Bengal is out of the contention for the semi-final spot, but. For Kerala Blasters, a very crucial match coming up because these three points are very crucial. So Kerala Blasters, see, Kerala Blasters now left out with six matches to play. Six matches. So uh, uh, apart from the East Bengal, uh, other five teams are also the semi-final aspirants. So they are also fighting hard for the semi-final sport. So the, the 14th match, coming up match against East Bengal is a very crucial match for Kerala Blasters uh, for taking full points and of course, not for full points, uh, to score more goals also because goal difference is very important regarding Kerala Blasters is concerned because goal difference will be the key factor which is going to decide this year's uh, the top four uh, playoff spot. So, so my point, the Kerala Blasters should win this match all three points and moreover have to score more goals against East Bengal, no doubt. Exactly, but uh, you know, I think it's going to be easier for East Bengal because like you said, mathematically they're out of the race, but it's going to be easier for them. Uh, like they don't have to focus much. They're going to play for pride, nothing to lose and they're going to build a lot of pressure on the Yellow Army and uh, coming on a, you know, back of a loss of 3-0, I think it's going to be tough for the Yellow Army to win this one. So be aware, Shaiju Chetan, it's going to be tough for you facing the Red and Gold Brigade. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree with that point, Varun, because uh, when we are facing a team without any pressure, so the pressure is upon us. Yeah, that point right. is taken because East Bengal has nothing to lose now. So they will, they will, they will, they will come out as all out. Uh, they will play all out football. So that is a key point which makes this game interesting. So much agreement. I thought there was <laughs> going to be a bit more spit and fire about that, but it seems like we're all in very loved in with each other after what uh, Mr. Ivan Vukomanovic has left us with. We're all in such a happy, jolly mood. In fact, Pulas, who's normally very, very mean to me, I won't be surprised if he sends me 10 memes after this episode. <laughs> so, this, is, this is what you've done, Ivan. This is what you've done to our, to our show. Uh, but great stuff. Uh, moving back to one of the games that had happened previously in the week also, FC Goa 
five nil winners uh, against Chennai and FC, and that was the game which condemned both Bohidar Bandovic to uh, uh, a sacking, so to speak. He was let go by Chennai, and after this game was done, uh, FC Goa though, uh, with that Ortiz hat trick and with with the attack linking up, Makan Chote scoring his first ever hero ISL goal. Uh, Pulas, do you think that they can make a late charge for the top four if they win? I mean, even if they win all their remaining games, it's still a bit of a mathematical. Uh, it'll be a mathematical anomaly if they reach yeah. uh, the top four, right? Yeah, yeah, difficult. Even though you know, I mean, stranger things have happened, but still difficult. I think even uh, with their run-in, if you look at their run-in and their fixtures, a couple of games are difficult. You you can't say that they're going to win all of them. Um, I think that's what Derek Barra has been telling them as well. They've been more realistic. I think the shackles have just slightly kind of come off, and which is why you could see them play with a lot of freedom, with a little less pressure on them. You know, they were playing like they were playing with a lot of fun. And obviously, uh, Chennai allowed them certain certain movements, made it slightly easy for them. But at the same time, you've got to finish those moves. You've got to add that. You Which know, they weren't doing touch. earlier in the season. Earlier. Yeah. And, and it seems yeah. like that reality has kind of... Derek Pereira has also been very interesting about, listen, it's going to be difficult. And maybe the team knows. But then at the same time, they know that if they keep winning, you 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 have to say that, oh, okay, it is a po- possibility, but it's, it's tough. It's out of their that? hands now. It's out of their hands. Yeah, yeah. It's not in their hands now. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's actually take a look at the upcoming fixtures as well, what we're going to be faced with during the coming week. Uh, we have uh, ATK Mohan Bagan versus Northeast United FC later in the day. Of course, we discussed that KBFC versus SC is Bengal's fixture, but also another game which I, I do believe is going to be a bit of a sleeper hit is Jamshedpur FC versus Mumbai City FC because mm-hmm. Mumbai City FC won their previous game kind of up on the upswing, Jamshedpur FC as well, uh, coming up Trump. So, uh, Jamshedpur FC, if they win that game, they can go up to, to 28. And they also have two games in hand up on the rest of the team. That's the Kerala Blasters and Mumbai City FC. So, uh, much to play for still in the season of the Hero ISL. Don't discount Odisha FC, who are still in the hunt. They're still uh, in the hunt. Right? They are still in the hunt. So, they, 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 could, uh, they could either play party poopers or they could actually go ahead and make that charge for the top four. Yeah. You never know. You never know how it plays out in this league, which is why we uh, enjoy it so much and love dissecting it so much. But... Uh, We've actually dissected a lot on this episode. We could go yes. on and on and on. Uh, it's been uh, it's been good. It's been candid. Uh, what was the best part about that uh, Vukomanovic interaction that you liked, uh, Shayu Chetan? Was it the was it the references that he was dropping to uh, to the places that he already knew of in Kochi? Did that warm your heart? Did it make you feel more connected with him as you as you already were? <laughs> the, the, I, I like the best part is the thing. I still the subtle. <laughs> Give me, give me a call after the show is done. We'll, 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 we'll see how this. Can but go. remember, the shirt he wears is from Kolkata, so no, it, it but, has the. But, <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no. But, <laughs> Raju, what happens if you send him the shirt? He wears it, and then they lose uh, the first. Ah, uh, uh, good question. Do 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 that? That? But good, Pulas. Will you take the blame? Are, take are, the blame? Be, be optimistic, yar. <laughs> 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 it's a valid question, though. It's, it's a valid a, question. See, this is this is for the first match of the first leg. Okay. I repeat. So you've gone for the safest, <laughs> safest, because even if they lose in that, they can win in the second. Yeah, game. rewind, yeah. rewind, rewind the LFL show. I said this is for the first match. Yeah, yeah, we heard that. Yeah. <laughs> not no. bad, not bad. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Shayu Chetan, uh, look forward to that happening and look forward to more such conversations on the Let's Football Live show. Uh, once again, thank you for your company. Uh, let's go get ourselves some lunch, guys. I know we're all uh, overdue now. So, uh, thirty paid puja, yeah. And uh, before before doing that, we'll uh, leave you with the goals of the week as we usually do. Take a look at these, and we'll see you next week at Saturday two p.m. See you. See you. See you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye bye.